It's time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A presentation of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, maker of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longines. <laughs> Good evening, this is Frank Knight. May I introduce our co-editors for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope? Larry Lesseur from the CBS television news staff and Alan Chellis, an editor of People Today magazine. Our distinguished guest for this evening is Mrs. Katie Lockheim, Director of Women's Activities for the Democratic National Committee. Mrs. Lockheim, you've been a delegate to the last two Democratic conventions and uh, you were present in Chicago last year. Where do you think the Democratic Party is going right now? Well, I think it's going right back into power. I think the recent elections in uh, New York and New Jersey and Wisconsin were striking evidences of the trend in the country, and I think even more striking and perhaps less newsworthy were the various mayor mayoralities that we picked up in places that hadn't had Democratic mayors for 18 and 20 years, such as Davenport, Iowa. And I think the party is well on the road to power. Well, how much of this return to power do you attribute to women's votes, Mrs. Lockhart? Well, I think the question there is the $64 question, because you'd have to take statistical evidence at every polling place. But I think that there's no question that the women in the Democratic Party were active in these last elections. You feel, do you, do you agree that, uh, that with the general concession that women helped elect Eisenhower or, uh, in fact, elected him? I would say that Eisenhower was elected by a plurality of six million votes, and I think it would be very hard to nail it down to women. I think it was men and women, and I think that there were many groups involved. Uh, and I think a great many of the people who voted for Eisenhower at that time have since returned to the Democratic Party. Well, Mrs. Laukheim, uh, do you, as an uh, active member of the Democratic Party, think that the Democratic Party should go out and win both houses of Congress next year, or do you think it better that it counterpunch until the uh, 1956 presidential elections? No, I most certainly think we should win every seat uh, that we can. I uh, have no patience with the so-called armchair strategists who say no, lay off, and let the Republicans keep the Senate, or don't push forward on that. I think uh, my job, as I see it, is to elect every Democrat that we can. Well, well, may I ask you a very pertinent question now? Uh, that recent exchange between uh, Attorney General Brownell and uh, former President Harry Truman, how do you think that's affected the Democratic Party's chances? I think it's enhanced our chances. Well, how? By coalescing the uh, dissident elements of the party? Or? Well, I don't think it has anything to do with coalescing. I think it has simply shocked the country into a realization that this was not the way to behave. Well, which way do you think the pendulum is going now? In favor of the... Uh, of the administration? The Republicans? You mean by the administration? Yes. <laughs> no, I think the pendulum is definitely in our favor. I said, well, how do you think the women of America feel about the Eisenhower administration right now? I think they must, in a great degree, be disappointed. I think that uh, a good many women were persuaded that this was a genuine crusade and that they went along on the basis that uh, all or at least some of the promises would be carried out. And I think anybody who <coughs> reads the papers can only find out that that hasn't been the case. Well, do, you, do you have any comment on the dismissal by Mrs. Hobby of Mrs. Hoey, I believe it is, from the Department of Public Welfare? Yes, I think that was uh, uh, a dismissal that created quite a bit of public comment. And I think that uh, from what I've heard, a great many letters have come into the White House and to Mrs. Hobby protesting her dismissal because she was in a position that was certainly not a sensitive or a policy-making position, the fact that she herself attempted to establish unsuccessfully. Well, Mrs. Larkheim, do you think that the Eisenhower administration has uh, sufficiently rewarded its women workers? I think they've made an attempt to. Uh, I can only say that uh, in that uh, path, they've followed along what the Democrats have done. Uh, we certainly took great uh, uh, interest and uh, uh, we showed that we appreciated the women of our party and there were certainly, we held the uh, firsts on a great many posts such as cabinet posts and ambassadorships which they have followed along on. 
and which they more or less had to follow along on. But uh, I think there's been some comment recently on the fact that uh, women as such were not invited to White House dinners. And the answer the president made was that uh, the women couldn't decide on who should be invited. And I think that rather indicated that there's perhaps some skirmishing behind the lines. Well, Mrs. Blauk, I'm, uh May I ask you, who is the real leader of the Democratic Party? Is it uh, Adlai Stevenson or is it Harry S. Truman? Adlai Stevenson is the titular leader of the Democratic Party. Uh, I would say I think that Harry Truman, as the past president, of course, holds a special position. At the moment, I'm afraid he's the target for the Republicans. Well, would, w do you feel, Mrs. Lockheim, that uh, Mr. Stevenson, in his recent speeches, uh, and it appears that he's been more critical of the administration as later, in his later speeches, do you think that's part of it? Is that part of any planned strategy? Or is this just Mr. Stevenson speaking? I, if it were, I wouldn't know of the strategy. I think this is just Mr. Stevenson speaking his mind. Well, how, how, do, you, how, do, the, how do the Democrats plan to, to meet these attacks of the Republican Party? Are they going to uh, reply in kind? Uh, on a questions of strategy, I would find it very difficult to answer because it would seem to me that that strategy, strategy does not come from the Democratic Committee, but rather from our leaders in the Senate and in the House. But like a military general, you don't give away your strategy in That's advance. That's right. But can you tell me, uh, Mrs. Lockheim, what are your own plans for activating the uh, Democratic women of America? Well, I have a great many plans. Sometimes I think I have more plans than I have time. But I expect as soon as I can at the beginning of the year to travel throughout America and meet the Democratic women leaders whom I have not yet had the pleasure of meeting and to work with them on the grassroots neighbor to neighbor problems. It seems to me that it's very important in my position to sit down and talk to them and not to just move into an area and make a formal speech, but to gather around a table. Uh, I've been able to do that in a few instances. So far, there have been some National Committee women in Washington, but I think most of them I'm going to have to go out and meet. Well, wh what do you feel is their principal concern right now? <coughs> what, what are the American women interested in politically? Well, when people ask me that question, I always think that their answer is an obvious one, that they're interested in all the issues, I think. Well, isn't there any one predominating issue at present? Well, McCarthyism, yes. McCarthyism, perhaps? No, I think the predominating <laughs> issue, in, uh, uh, as far as women are concerned, is the cost of living. In other words, the woman who is the, uh, in charge of the family budget is very much concerned with what she has to pay, and uh, she's very much concerned about the all the measures that tie into that. Well, may I go back again to the uh, case of Harry Dexter White? Do you, as a, a Democratic uh, political worker, feel that there was a political motive behind uh, Mr. Attorney General Brownell bringing up the case at this time? Yes, I think that's been pointed out very vigorously by our chairman, Steve Mitchell, on various occasions, in fact, as late as last night. And uh, I think that possibly that uh, the effect, if it was to have an effect on the California election, certainly seemed to me to be partially successful. Uh, although it must be said that that particular congressional district was heavily Republican. But we had heard that our man had a fair chance of winning. Well, do you think this communism and government issue is going to blow over, or will it continue right into 1954 in the congressional elections? Well, you're asking me to make a long guess. Uh, I would say that the issues that we just mentioned, the consumer issues, the farm issues, and all the other issues, are bound to become so important that the Republicans will not be able to spend as much time as they have been spending. And I think also in that connection, if communism were to continue to be featured by them, they would very soon find themselves uh, handling a bipartisan issue because after all there isn't anyone in America who is not against communism. Well that's quite true Ms. Lockheim. Mean, doesn't it appear to you at present that the Republicans are certainly trying to pin the communist label on the Democrat Party? It certainly appears on the, that on way the to me and to everyone else, yes. Well have you any plans or do you know of any plans to answer these attacks? Oh I think there will be plans as was pointed out before. I, I'm not sitting here giving away strategy. But well, then there Mrs. is Lockheim, a plan on strategy at present. I, s I presume that there are many plans of strategy. Well, will we Mrs. see Alcon, any Do you uh, think that the Democratic Party should be uh, in constructive opposition or merely a uh, negative opposition? Oh, heavens no. They must be in constructive in opposition. Uh, I think that we will always have a program. That's what we are uh, known for. We always have had a program. And I think where 
our people have shown in the last 10 months that they will support the present administration when the present administration is enacting those measures which we believe in and we will also perform a very important duty and that is give a responsible not only constructive but responsible opposition in which we will not impugn the loyalty well, then you feel that despite these republican attacks the democrats generally will continue to support much of uh, the eisenhower uh, policy well, foreign policy foreign policy certainly <laughs> yes because that's our foreign policy mm -hmm. there's a final question mrs lauk i may i ask you again to tell us what you think will be the real political issues in 1954 I think the real political issues will be the cost of living, the question of taxes, the question of the farm program, the question of revision of Taft-Hartley, which has been tossed around for a long while, and certainly the issue of our foreign program. Well, how do you think women actually react to those issues? I think they react to them in a very much more alert fashion than, certainly, than is given credit to them for. I think that they are very well informed and they are watching everything that this administration is doing with a very sharp eye. Well, thank you very much, Mrs. Katie Laukheim, for being with us here tonight. The opinions that you've heard our speakers express tonight have been entirely their own. The editorial board for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope was Larry Lesseur and Alan Chellis. Our distinguished guests, was Mrs. Katie Lockheim, Director of Women's Activities for the Democratic National Committee. If you're contemplating the purchase of a very fine watch as a Christmas gift, it will be profitable to compare the facts you have about Longine watches with the facts you have about any other timepiece. And you'll find that the facts about Longine are convincing proof that in a Longine, you have one of the world's very finest watches. Thus, in competition with the world's best watches, Longines watches have won for excellence and elegance, 10 World's Fair grand prizes and 28 gold medals. For accuracy, highest honors from the leading government observatories. For dependability, a position of leadership in sports, aviation, and in science. Yet though Longines is one of the very finest watches made anywhere in the world, a Longines watch is not excessively expensive for you may buy and proudly give a Longines watch this Christmas for as little as $71.50. And this is important. Whatever the price of the Longines watch you select, it's manufactured to the high standard of excellence which has made Longines the world's most honored watch, the world's most honored Christmas gift, premier product of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. You and your family will enjoy a special Thanksgiving treat in Longines Whitnor's fifth annual Thanksgiving festival, a gala hour-long program of music, song, and dance. Be sure to see it on this CBS television station Thanksgiving afternoon from 5 to 6 o'clock Eastern Time. This is Frank Knight reminding you that Longines and Whitnor watches are sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem, Agency for Longines Whitnor Watches. Your letter carrier is giving his time to support muscular dystrophy. Now you can support the muscular dystrophy campaign through the gift envelope that he leaves in your mailbox. This is the CBS Television Network.